you're gonna die never even trying to reach your full potential. This was the life that you were supposed to live, but you didn't try. Those of you who are listening to this, whoever hear this, you will not find toughness in a comfortable environment. You will not find it. The only way you find it is to drown yourself in a position where you're just out of sorts. We all have two people. And I'm not saying you're crazy. We have the easy voice, which is that 20% telling yourself that you're, I'm easy at 90% of my full potential, maybe 100% at that 20%. That's that voice that we all love. That's that very comfortable voice that, that's that mommy holding you saying, it's gonna be okay. Doesn't care how good you are, just loves you. Just loves you no matter how messed up you are in life. This other voice that we walk very far away from is a voice saying, hey man, you ain't doing shit. So we try to get this voice out of our head completely. And we live over here in this land. So what you have to do first is turn up this voice over here. The voice saying things to you that aren't nice. That it's in our head saying, you know what man, dude, you're not, you're not doing shit. And it's not putting yourself down. People take this the wrong way in this new society. I'm not saying to put yourself down. I'm saying listen to the truth. And the truth isn't in the 20%. The truth is in this other part of your brain saying, look man, you're wasting a bunch of percentage here. We have 80 more percent that we're not tapping into because in this other 80% is suffering, pain, failure, 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 self-doubt, darkness, and then a whole bunch of light. But to get to this light, you gotta go through all of this shit. So a lot of us know that. I can get over here, but over here, man, this is much better because I gotta go through this journey that is not fun. This, this from 20 to 100%, this shit in between is not fun. So we decide to live over here. So everybody goes, how do you do that? You know exactly how to do that. You know exactly, it's, it's not a magic trick. There's nothing I talk about in that book that's a magic trick. It's all back down to a very primitive mindset of we just have to do. It's like breathing. Breathing becomes normal. Like we didn't know that, that, that we're doing it. That's how you have to live your life. When that alarm clock goes off at four or five in the morning, your mind says no. You just say, this is what we do. It's what we do now. Because to get to where you want to go, the amount of pain involved, I'm not saying physical, I'm not saying you got to break yourself off. The amount of mental pain of how many times you're going to have to do something that you don't want to do to get to where you want to go is going to be, it, it, there's going to be more times you do something that, that you don't want to do than you are going to want to do. It. And that's, that, that's your new norm. That's your new norm. So then it's like breathing. And then once you do this over and over and over again, it becomes like breathing. I don't want to live this lifestyle, but to get to the other side of this, I have to. So if you really want it, you realize what trying is and what trying is not. You're not working your butt off hard enough. You're not trying hard enough. We all think we're trying hard, but what are you gauging that off of? I talked to this one kid the other day. College is kicking my ass. I said, what are you gauging that off of? I go, are you trying? He goes, yeah, I'm trying my ass off. I'm studying hard. I go, what are you gauging trying hard off of? Well, in high school, I didn't have to try at all. And I made great grades. In college, I'm trying hard. You're trying hard compared to what you did in high school, which was it came easy to you. So your reality is something that you created off of something easy. So you trying hard is two hours of studying. I'm gonna tell you the difference in trying hard and trying hard. Trying hard is something in your mind just doesn't stop. We, we're, we know two hours isn't enough. When I was 297 pounds and I was fat as hell trying to be a Navy SEAL, the scariest thing in the world to me, even to this day, was that that could have been the rest of my life. 
I thought then I was trying hard. That's the scariest thing in the world. I thought then, 297 pound, working for Ecolab, spraying for cockroaches, making a thousand dollars a month. I thought that was me at my 100% potential. Come to find out, a few years later, I wasn't anywhere near that. 106 pounds less, graduated Navy SEAL training, went on to do all these other things. Looking back on that, that was me trying hard. That's why people gotta understand what is in us, we have no idea until we start trying hard. And I mean really trying hard, where you're obsessed with, hey, this is my new norm. This isn't always fun. It's not always meant to be fun. And that's when you know you're trying hard. I have this haunting voice in the back of my head. We, a lot of us have it. We just ignore it. And it was there for years. So I knew in the back of my mind that I could pull off this whatever. Whatever I wanted, I knew I could. But I, I was afraid of the work. Because I wasn't gifted with brains. I wasn't gifted with God-given talent as far as like athleticism. So I knew to get to where I had to go, to be on the same playing field as these men, to even try out for this program, I knew the work was gonna be something that I didn't wanna even, even attack. So I was just put it off. But yet you did it. Because it haunted me. The voice in my head said, you know what man? You're gonna die never even trying to reach your full potential. I developed a reality that wasn't real. That's the thing we always do. We can have a great life, but we always build this reality around the one thing we don't have. So therefore, our great life, we don't even see it. We see the one piece of clothing we weren't able to get versus the amazing things we have. So we focus on that. I was the king of focusing on the one bad thing in my life. The one bad person called me nigger. The, everything bad, I focused on that. But over here was a beautiful reality of my life. Even though I came from nothing, where I could have taken my mind for the possibilities of where I can go if I work harder. That was all over here. But I lived in the filth over here. This was the life that you were supposed to live. But you didn't try just by going to war with myself every day and putting these challenges and these goals and these obstacles, these insurmountable obstacles. So it wasn't about losing 106 pounds. Me losing five pounds was an accomplishment. Me losing 10 pounds and then 50 pounds. And then the more I did this, the more I gained confidence. And then the more I gained confidence, the more I realized these Navy SEALs, man. These guys can't do what I'm doing right now. I had no coach, had no trainer, had no money. I didn't know how to lose weight. I had no knowledge of what I was doing. I was just working. I was just sacrificing. And then through that, all these different tools started coming up. But I would have never found these tools if I didn't put myself in a very uncomfortable place. We all look for toughness. We all want it, but we look for it in a comfortable environment. You will not find toughness in a comfortable environment. Those of you who are listening to this, whoever hear this, you will not find it. I was trying to look for it everywhere. The only way you find it is to drown yourself in a position where you're just out of sorts, where you can't swim and you're drowning. Where you're drowning, you're drowning in life. But you say, you know what, man? That. I'm gonna figure out how to backstroke or something. And then you're figuring out all these tools. Your mind starts to, when you quit, your mind does this. Because you're out. Once you say, I'm not gonna quit, this is the 40%. When you quit, your mind says, we're done. So it doesn't expand. There's no expansion when you quit. When you say, F you, uh-uh, this sucks, I'm drowning, I'm miserable, I'm suffering, I'm broken, but I'm not going anywhere. What happens to your mind is it does this. It says, he's not leaving. So we gotta expand, we gotta grow. 
We gotta figure this thing out. So then these compartments in your brain start to have, they have to work. They have to work. And then you start to engage parts of your mind that you never engaged before. But you can't engage it by sitting back in these nice chairs, drinking this nice water, talking to you, talking about what I wanna do. That's where, so that's where the 40% thing comes in. It comes in when you're in suffer mode and you say, I'm not gonna quit. You're forcing your brain now to operate on a level it's not used to, but then it becomes used to it.